Hello, it's Dave. I've got another game here for us. This will be a two-part game. This will be a Catlin opening to be labeled as 2A and 2B. So this will be the first part. And what we're going to be looking at here is a game between two experts. White will be rated at 2157 and black is 2086. The game was played on the FICS server. The time was uh, game in 15. ECO code will be E05. And our themes will be plans, good versus bad and no plan, and mate threats. So let's get going. White opens the game with d4, d5, knight to f3, knight to f6, g3. White moves into the Catalan opening. Black plays e6, bishop to g2, bishop to e7, white castles, black castles, c4, and d takes c4. Capture of the pawn signifies the open variation of the Catalan opening. Next for white is knight to c3, knight to c6, bishop to f4, bishop to d7, and e4. White gains space in the center. Black's next move is knight to h5. Black begins to uh, a process of chasing white's bishop, trying to exchange it. And I think this would be a good time to start talking about some planning. Uh, I've made many times the comment that a bad plan is better than a good plan. And I would like to uh, expound on this just a little bit. If all you're doing is just making moves, you'll never be able to coordinate your moves into uh, where they, the pieces can coordinate against each, with each other. And, you know, and to complement each other in making an attack or a defense. If you have a bad plan, and this is the biggest part about a bad plan is better than a no plan at all, is that if you have a bad plan, you can sit down uh, or during the game, calculate how you think your uh, plan will come out, and calculate some moves, and maybe in your calculations you'll find that your plan is not a good plan and you can change it. There again you might make some incorrect calculations, which we all do, and you'll make a few moves. You'll see that your plan is not working, maybe uh, because of bad calculations, maybe your opponent uh, just made some moves, that, you know, better moves. For whatever reason, you'll see that your plan is not working, and then you'll be able to change your plan. And from there, you might find the right plan, you might make another bad plan, but by having a plan and following that plan, you'll be able to determine whether or not your plan is working, not working, and if it's not working, you'll have the ability to change it. If all you're doing is making moves, you'll never know really for sure whether or not your moves are really uh, accomplishing anything and your opponent might uh, be blocking your moves but you have no idea why to, you know, to a point. But anyway, uh, I guess to make a long story short and I hope I've made myself a little bit clearer on this point is that even though you might have a bad plan, by making the moves that you've calculated out you can find out whether that plan is going to succeed or not and you can always change it. Kind of hard to change something if all you're doing is moving pieces. So anyway, let me get off my soapbox and let's get back to the game. Black makes a move, like I said, knight to h5, attacking this bishop. The bishop has a retreat square, so he drops back to e3. Next, black plays bishop to b4. And let me make a little comment here also about this move. Unless black plans on exchanging this bishop at c3, this is kind of a wasted move. Unless his intent was to entice white into pushing up this a pawn, and that way black can then retreat his bishop back to where it came, and then he would take his knight and drop it into the b3 square, which is no longer protected by this a3 pawn. So that's th what you have to kind of keep in mind when you make a move like this. A, do I want to exchange it? Or B, do I want to uh, 
uh, possibly entice my opponent to making a move that will leave him a weak square. So I just wanted to make a little comment about that particular move. Uh, you'll see in the game that this bishop to b4 move is really not a good move. The next move by white is queen to c2 and it's, a, it's an okay move, it's not the best move. The best move really would have been, and I'm going to go through some variations in this game which I haven't done very often in the past. Really the best move for white would have been instead of queen to c2 would have been knight to d2. Attacking the whoops, the c4 pawn. And also white would be attacking the h5 knight. So the knight would have to move so he plays knight to f6. White would recapture the pawn now the material is even and white increases his control over the e5 square. And of course then white could move his queen to c2 which I believe is an, a normal development square for the queen in the Catalan opening. So let's go back to the game. White had played after bishop to b4, queen to c2. And also black, I'm sorry, white should not be afraid of this exchange on the c3 square for because he could recapture with the pawn and the pawn would strengthen his control over the center. Next, after queen to c2 came knight to f6. Next is rook at a to d1 and this is a good move in the sense that white puts his rook in alignment with the black queen. Next, black plays knight to g4. He still has his eyes on this bishop. He's making a lot of moves trying to get rid of this black squared bishop. Next, white plays bishop to f4. And now that the white king is castled, he be, could possibly be threatening something like knight to b5 and the knight and bishop would be putting pressure on the c7 square. Of course, black could retreat his bishop either to h5 or d6 to protect it. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of one of the reasons for black, I'm sorry, for white making his move. Next is bishop to d6. There again, black is just, he just wants to make this um, exchange of the dark squared bishops. And of course, white does not allow this. He plays the move e5. Next is bishop to e7. Now let's also take a moment here and let's take a look at this dark squared bishop for black. He's made three moves to go back to the original square. First, he, he played his bishop to b4. Then he played it to d6, and now he's back to e7, his original square. So in effect, black has made three moves to bring his bishop back to the same square, and by doing so, he's given white three extra moves. He's lost three temples. He didn't accomplish anything by any of these pawn moves. He didn't exchange it. He didn't force a weakness in white's position. All he did was move his bishop three times, and in the course of those three moves, White was able to uh, improve his position. Next is after Bishop to e7, White plays a h3, pawn h3, and the Black Knight drops back to h6. And finally, Black ob obliges Black, White obliges Black by exchanging that dark squared Bishop that he's been hunting all game long. He plays Bishop takes h6. And now g takes h6. White has accomplished something by this exchange. He's broken up the pawn protection around the black king. Next move for white is knight e4. He brings a piece from the queen side to the king side to assist in his attack. Also the black pawn at c4 is under attack by the queen. It's not protected by anything. So black protects it with b5, and white now plays king to h2, and black plays knight to b4, attacking the queen and the a2 pawn. And the next move for white is queen to d2, preparing to move his queen to the king side. 
the um, the tax H6 pawn. Now, Black could, on his next move, of course, capture the A2 pawn, but by doing so, he really doesn't accomplish anything. Because all he's going to do, if he captures it, White will bring his queen to the king side, and he will have an overwhelming amount of force on the king side to attack the black king. Plus, this knight would be sitting at A2, not doing anything to uh, threaten anything in White's position. In effect, he'd be playing without a piece. The next move for black is h5. And this is not a very good move. This, in fact, is most probably the losing move for black. His best move would have been king to g7. And if you take a, a really good look at the position here, even though black's pawns have been compromised on the king side, he is able to protect all the entry squares except for the f4 square and the g4 square by white. So it will take white two moves to bring any kind of attack against the black king and of course by the time he moves his king to f4 this rook could slide over to g8 after of course a check the king goes back and Black has a good setup against uh, White's attack, and he should be able to hold it off. White, I'm sorry, Black also would have, you know, the control over the dark squares here. So, uh, to King to G7 would have been the best move to make. It still would have been a long way to go. Also, if he could stymie White's attack here on the King side, Black has a four pawn to two pawn advantage on the queen side. He could possibly later in the game get those pawns rolling and uh, push them through and possibly get past pawn and queen and possibly win the game. So the game is far from over after king to g7, but in the game black made the move h5. Now I'm going to stop at this point. I will continue uh, as uh, Catalan number 2b to finish the game. So I want to thank you for your time for this portion of the game, and I'll catch you in a little bit for part B.